How are y'all this morning? Good? Getting some caffeine in you? Getting a good buzz about the day? All right, y'all. Well, thank you for coming out to One Million Cups. Today, we're here to learn through some experiences of others, of other entrepreneurs, about their journey for starting their businesses and growing it, um, and also how we can help them. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to give a, a warm thank you to the Little Rock Chamber of Commerce for allowing us to host this awesome event here every single week from 9 to 10. Also, like to thank the Kauffman Foundation for giving us the brand um, here in Little Rock because they also have 1 million cups in 35 other cities and shooting for 40 by the end of the summer. Um, so that puts us in a family of 1 million cup attendees all across the nation helping each other trying to raise up through entrepreneurship, which is an am amazing thing. So I'd like to thank the Kauffman Foundation for that. Also like to thank the Arkansas Venture Center for helping us power this event. Uh, Mike Steely, um, he's actually running around trying to help make sure that everything's working properly as we speak. Um, has been, he has been a great help um, onboarding some of the speakers, recruiting people to come, making sure we have coffee every morning. Um, so give him a warm thank you when you, when you get a chance um, after the event. Um, we also have other, other organizers. We have Nicholas Norfolk, um, who is our social media guru, and he's actually tweeting as we speak. Um, <laughs> And so on that point, um, one, one thing that we do encourage every single week at One Million Cups is get active on social media, take pictures of the presenters, and thank them for presenting, but also capture what they're saying and share it with your networks because that's going to help their businesses grow. Um, and then also, we, we like to capture it ourselves. Um, I'd like to thank um, WebJive for being here today, who is capturing our, our video. Um, they started doing this. Yeah. Um, they started doing this for us last week, and I checked out the video, which we will send to you guys um, after this session from last week. Um, great content, did an amazing job capturing that, and that'll be a great piece of content that we can share with our networks as well to allow people to see the type of experience we get every single week. Um, so that's a huge advantage also for our presenters um, because they have something that they can share and show, um, here's how I explain my story and here's how I'm engaging with the community. Um, also, I'd like to give a shout out to a couple of other, our other organizers. Um, Emily Reeves, Dustin Williams, and Warwick Saban cannot be here today, but they have helped us um, recruit some entrepreneurs and also um, do a little bit of uh, um, digital media type stuff as well um, for the messaging and the marketing of the event. So got to give them a shout out. Um, and I think that covers it for the sponsors. So um, one last thing, um, the reason why we're here is to caffeinate our community because if we can drink one million more cups of coffee together, we can fundamentally change the way our, our entrepreneurial ecosystem is working. Um, we, if we understand how to help each other out, um, we're all going to grow in the long term. So that's what this event uh, uh, is about. So uh, tune in, um, listen well, think of some good questions. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to welcome our, our first speaker um, of Seatbelt Guard. Jerry Matthews. <laughs> Good morning and thank you for uh, letting me come talk with you guys today. Statistically speaking, um, the beginning of 2013, the national, do I need, can you hear me? National average, um, a person was killed uh, because of texting and driving in the United States once every three days. Um, fast forward to today, one year later, um, one person is killed now every two days um, because of texting and driving. Um, so with, even with all the awareness campaigns that are out there um, talking about the dangers of texting and driving, the epidemic is still getting worse. Um, it has been suggested too that uh, probably over 50% of the fender benders that occur um, now are because of texting and driving. So it definitely, definitely is a problem. Uh, my company, uh, Seatbelt Guard, has a solution for texting and driving. We have a device that uh, mounts underneath the uh, dashboard of a vehicle and actually will report to 
an administrator, a parent, um, to someone um, that the driver is using their cell phone while they're driving. Um, so we also offer, with this device, um, we offer real-time GPS tracking. You can know where your vehicle is at any given moment or where it's been for the past 30 days. Um, it offers, uh, it monitors rate of speed and um, geofencing. So if mom and dad don't want little Johnny to go into a certain area of town, they can get on the computer, draw a circle around that area, and if little Johnny goes into that area, or if he leaves an area, um, they're gonna know about it. Uh, so this may be a teenager's worst nightmare, but, uh, but I can see that uh, mom, and dad are, mom and dad are gonna love this. Um, the company was, uh, was started, our, our device was invented by Hot Springs dad who just wanted to, to prevent his kids from texting and driving. And uh, so it took him about four years to, uh, to put, the, put the concept together and to make it work. Um, but now we have a, have a uh, product that um, we think is going to save a lot of lives and we've actually been on the market now for about nine months. Um, we see really two major markets um, for our product, one of which the parents of, of teenagers. Um, and I have lived that sleepless night before my, uh, before my sons turned 16. <sighs> Laid there awake at night that night knowing that tomorrow morning my child is gonna leave the house without me in the car. I knew he could drive, but, uh, but all of a sudden, I'm not gonna be in the car. So had this, had this device been available then, I absolutely would have had that. Um, to market to the parents of teenagers, we are marketing through the car dealers in Arkansas. With the help of Dennis Youngmeyer and the Arkansas Automobile Dealers Association, um, car dealers now are our exclusive retailers in the state of Arkansas. We've given them exclusive retail rights um, so if you, if you want one of these on your kid's car, um, go to your local car dealer and um, you can get those there. Uh, let's see, we have also been endorsed by Jay Bradford, the Arkansas Insurance Commissioner. Um, and we now have, there's one insurance company at this point that uh, is offering discounts on the uh, use of the product. So hopefully we're, we can grow with more insurance companies and that will make that uh, um, more palatable, certainly. Um, the second area that we, uh, that we see would be fleet companies, companies with a lot of fleet vehicles. Uh, we believe that uh, fleet managers are going to, I mean, they want to know, uh, number one, that their, their drivers are safe. Um, this past November, Comcast Cable Corporation wrote a check for $2.7 million uh, because one of their 7,000 drivers was texting and driving rear into the car. So $2.7 million they spent just because of that one mistake. Um, so Comcast Cable Corporation now is looking at putting our device on their vehicles. So that would certainly be a neat thing for us. Um, and then uh, one story I was just reminded of having a conversation this morning. We have uh, Pathfinder organization out of Jacksonville. Um, they run about 70 vans around the state of Arkansas and uh, pick up special needs children and take them to, uh, take them to school or special needs adults to, uh, to take them to work. Um, one byproduct of this thing, I mean, obviously they want their drivers to be safe, but uh, one byproduct that we found with this is they said all of a sudden their efficiency went through the roof because their drivers knew they were being monitored. Uh, we obviously uh, cut out the, the cell phone usage of the drivers. Um, they said, even in their office, people who had nothing to do with the, uh, with the vehicles, uh, their office at the time was fielding between 35 and 50 phone calls per week from the general public complaining about their drivers. Your driver was texting, your driver was speeding, your driver cut me off. Um, after they put the uh, devices on their vehicles, the calls went down to five per week. So the efficiency of people who had nothing to do with the vehicles went up. So that was a neat byproduct that we found. Um, I guess what we're, we're looking for help um, with marketing the product, obviously, and probably more so in the, in the fleet um, situation. Um, we have attempted to market the product through associations. 
um, such as the Ready Mix, um, the Ready Mix Concrete Association, um, the Arkansas Oil Producers Association, and that kind of thing. Um, and we've offered the associations a commission to help us market to their members. We felt like that was a, a quick way to get to a lot of people at one time. Um, and we've had some success there. And, uh, and then we also have just cold called um, companies from lists and that kind of thing. And as you might imagine, that has uh, had limited success, certainly. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video about our product and then uh, we'll answer questions. Seatbelt Guard product line and we'll familiarize you with their operation. Along with GPS tracking, the Seatbelt Guard family of applications have the following features. Speeding notification, operating the phone while driving, traveling into or out of a defined area, this is called geofencing, or tampering with the device. Now let's talk about the device itself. The device is installed under the dash of a car and gets its power directly from the fuse panel of the vehicle. The device takes about five or ten minutes to set up and install. Now there's two wires in the wiring harness. There's a red wire with a fuse clip on the end and a black wire for the grounding connection. The red wire connects to the fuse by removing a fuse from the panel, replacing the fuse into the clip on the end of the red wire, and then replacing the fuse into the receptacle. The black wire connects to a ground, typically by removing any bolt from the frame of the vehicle and inserting the black wire, then replacing the bolt. Now, the software on the device will need to be set up next before the installation is completed. Locate and open the seatbelt guard application on the device, and you're going to see the screen. Now, there's three blanks, but you're only going to enter information into the middle and the bottom blank. The top blank will already have the device's number in it. The middle blank is where you can enter any information that helps identify the vehicle, such as Joe's truck or blue car or maybe van number 35. The bottom blank is the most important. Now, in this blank, you're going to enter the phone number of the person receiving the alerts. Now, this number is going to become the account number. All devices come with access to a control panel that will allow the account administrator, mom, dad, fleet manager, to see the real-time maps and the locations of where the infractions occurred. Now this is a web-based control panel. To access the control panel, the administrator will go to seatbeltguard.com, click on the login link at the top of the screen, and then enter their username and password. After this is entered, the administrator will see the screen. Now, this screen shows the tracking of the vehicle. If they have more than one device on the account, uh, at the top left, the administrator can choose which vehicle that they want to look at. And if you scroll down, you can see a tracking map for the vehicle. Now, the map will pinpoint the locations of any infractions, such as speeding or operating the phone. This data is made available for the past 30 days. Also from the screen, the account administrator can generate an infraction report showing the location, the date, and the time of each infraction. These reports can be exported as PDF files, Word files, or Excel files. And now let's talk about TextGuard. TextGuard is a cornerstone application for seatbelt guard. And when talking about TextGuard, it's good to know some statistics about the hazards of texting while driving. So here's some facts. You are 23.2 times more likely to be in an accident while you're texting and driving. Texting and driving has been found to be just as bad as being intoxicated while driving. At 60 miles an hour, you will drive the distance of a football field when you're looking at a text message for 4.5 seconds. Now, how does TextGuard work? The TextGuard app is installed on a driver's phone. When the seatbelt guard device is installed in a vehicle, the device is looking for a phone with the application. When the driver's phone gets within 10 feet of the seatbelt guard device, the device then waits for the vehicle's rate of speed to exceed 9 miles an hour. If the driver uses their phone when going more than 9 miles an hour, the seatbelt guard device will send an alert to the administrator. Now this will work on both Apple and Android phones. Now one special note is that the Seatbelt Guard application will not interfere with a Bluetooth connection which operates uh, a driver's phone by voice command. So if the driver is using the onboard Bluetooth to talk to operate their phone, Seatbelt Guard will not interfere with this and will not send any alerts to the administrator. That concludes this video. 
If you have any further questions, you can give us a call at 888-882-9227. Or you can ask me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna keep you up here okay. um, for the next uh, ten minutes or so. We're gonna allow the audience to dig into some questions that they've been coming up with throughout your presentation, and I know I have a few. Um, so before we, we get started, um, I'm gonna hand off the mic. So make sure you say your name and who you're associated with, so that we can get to know everybody in the room. Hi, I'm David with Acorn Hours. Um, I was just wondering, so you said that there was a separate in inventor who invented it in um, Hot Springs. Could you talk a little bit about how the business was formed and how you came in? Um, guys, do you want to stand in? Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. Um, <clears throat> owner and inventor, uh, his name is Joe Rucker. Um, he actually is the president um, of our company and uh, was not able to be here today. Um, frankly, I heard about the product um, before the company really had started, and I thought, my gosh, this could be huge. Um, again, have lived the night of being a parent, um, and would definitely have had one of those on my uh, on my kids' vehicles. Also, um, I was in business in Hot Springs in the furniture business for well over 20 years. I had delivery trucks out running uh, constantly always had a fear in the back of my mind that uh, what if one of my ten dollar an hour delivery guys does something stupid and, and hurts someone um, in the vehicle I knew I had I knew I had insurance but uh, you never know if you have enough insurance uh, so I was interested personally in the product um, for those two reasons um, went to him and asked if I could if I could be a part of this thing and told him my thoughts of how to market this thing and uh, he was dumb enough to believe me. Yes. Eric Caldwell with WebJive. I don't, this is more, less of a question and more of a lead. Um, one thing I see happening regularly in my block is waste management truck drivers constantly on the phone, speeding, everything else. So give those guys a call. I think they would be very interested <laughs> to hear what their drivers are doing. And that's a massive nationwide fleet. I appreciate that, and I, there's a uh, waste management um, executive that lives in my neighborhood, and uh, he has told me that they have all kinds of sophisticated equipment on their vehicle. Um, Not for this. Thank you. <laughs> I will certainly take that. Doug Collins, uh, ABC Mentor. Uh, what's your pricing structure? You know, if you're working through car dealers right. and they're getting a commission, then part of your uh, revenue goes to them from uh, your marketing and sales model. And then if you were to go to an association and you said, I want you, and I'm thinking of the big I, independent insurance agents of Arkansas, they're always looking for non-member revenue. This would be a perfect application for that. And I can introduce you to Lynn Zeno, who's the executive director. You okay. Okay. But I'm just thinking if you go to them, then they're going to want a piece. The only place that you can get this thing put on is at an approved um, dealer. I mean, we have a whole bunch of dealers out there. I'm sure not all of these um, park, you know, guys that sell on a corner lot are approved. So it has to be some approved dealer. So kind of walk me through your pricing structure so I understand. Um, how that works we are we have a, a wholesale price that we are selling um, to the car dealers uh, they as an association um, agreed that they would all sell um, the product retail the product at four ninety nine ninety five installed um, so there is and I will say there is a a nice little profit um, in there for the car dealers um, and then we again gave them in the state of Arkansas the exclusive retail rights so they, people can't go to Walmart to buy these they can't go to AutoZone um, but then separately we still are able to go um, sell these to um, fleet companies and that kind of thing and pricing there we're depending on the number of units obviously you know the more the more they buy um, the, the cheaper we can sell to a degree 
we're going to be somewhere between 269 and 299 uh, per unit there selling to to companies with fleet vehicles and they, and they install them we can show we will show them we will show them and again depending on size and you know we can we'll we'll help right and they would install them they have a built-in shop and that's what pathfinder did um, we showed the pathfinder guys you know how to do this and it's about it there was probably more technical stuff in this video than, than you guys really cared to see but uh it is five to ten minute install and uh so yeah, Pathfinder did their own um, as part of the as part of the package. Yes, ma'am. Charles with Best Beverage or something. Um, I have a question. Is there a monthly monitoring fee? That's pretty loud. I probably don't need that. <laughs> with our pricing, um, that includes the first year monitoring. So at retail from a car dealer at, at four ninety nine ninety five, or with a fleet situation um, around. 270 to 300 uh, includes one year of monitoring. After that, um, $15 a month monitoring. Um, and again, that maintains all the apps, uh, the GPS tracking, the geofencing, the rate of speed monitoring, and the texting. Are you coming into seeing that some companies are already affiliated with another company that does something similar but not full and in a contract? How do you deal with that? <clears throat> That's a good question. That's uh, that's what we would like. We that's what we would like your help with. But yes, um, and there are other devices out there. A lot of the fleet companies that we've talked with, um, some of them could care less about the texting and driving portion. It's strictly asset management, uh, GPS tracking, and that sort of thing. There are obviously lots of, of other companies out there. We're we're competitive price wise, um, but you know there's there's just a lot of those out there. Um, that track the vehicles. Uh, so again, the thing that makes us unique is the texting and driving. And on that side of the uh, of the fence, the texting and driving, there are apps out there that can, uh, you know, prevent the texting and driving. Um, but little Johnny, if he's smart enough, he he can um, do either delete the app or unplug the device or whatever the case may be. Mom and Dad never know about it. So to our knowledge, um, there's no way to beat the system with our product. Um, so while there may be similar products out there, nobody does everything that we do, to our knowledge. Mark, uh, CTO of Privacy Star. I have two questions, actually. Number one, have you tried to approach Laidlow and some of the other agencies that deal with uh, school buses? Uh, I don't know about texting and driving, but I could see geofencing could be beneficial to both parents, knowing where the, where the school bus is, if there's been a holdup, you know, why is my kid not in school yet? Um, as well as just monitoring drivers. There have been a lot of concerns about um, school bus drivers not adhering to rate of speed and other regulations. And a second part of the question, if I may, before you answer. Yes. Um, you talked a lot about, you know, um, protecting the mom and dad part. What about incentivizing little Johnny? What about actually thinking about little Johnny and saying, what can I do to make it interesting for the kid to actually not text and drive? Um, sort of turn it into a game, maybe some sort of a reward system rather than punishment, right? So turn this, turn this <laughs> thing around a little bit. Uh, it might not work with truck drivers or, or you know, uh, others, but just uh, curious how, you know, if you thought about that. No, I haven't. Um, the second part of the question. Um, and I would be, I'm intrigued to, to see if you have some, some ideas there. Um, it comes out of just experience with trying to sell similar to that. Right. Incentives for the teen drivers. Okay, <laughs> thank you. But, but the first part, oh. I think um, we have not gone to some of the, and, and I'm assuming you're, the laid law and some of these guys, they're major companies outside the state of Arkansas. To my knowledge. Is actually here in oh, are they? Really? See, I did not know they that. So, the bus, part of the okay. System. We have approached some of the local um, smaller school systems uh, with a lot of those companies their response has or a lot of those schools their response has been well our drivers are teachers our drivers are coaches our drivers are parents um, so we feel like they're probably safe so we've gotten some some pushback there um, have felt like some of the major companies frankly did not know that that some of those companies operated in arkansas and we've not branched outside of arkansas too much yet we are ready to to start doing that um, but that's a great great lead I appreciate that very much 
Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm, I'm Chauncey Holloman with the City of Little Rock. And um, one of my questions is, have you thought about reaching out to the state vehicles in the different departments? You know, they have pool cars and people that go out and monitor throughout the state. And people that have um, issued cell phones, they may, you know, put some kind of app on the cell phone. But mm -hmm. like you said, the way around that is to leave the phone wherever you are. But if right. it's a pool car and if it's installed in every pool car, you know, that, that's unavoidable. I think that may be a good uh, venue for you. We have talked to, and it wasn't me personally, so I don't remember who we spoke with, but somebody that um, apparently was in charge of, of acquisition of, of vehicles and that sort of thing. Um, his response to us was, I think it's a great thing. We'd love to do it. However, I have to have the organizations spec that in their, in their bid, and yeah. then he... So, and you would have to go through each uh, department each. individually. Okay. Uh, but they all do have pool cars, and I think that would be something plenty of. This particularly AEDC, an office that uh, does so much monitoring, which they particularly drive a lot, and DHS drives a lot. Those may be two that would be a really good fit for you. DHS was the second thing. What was the first one? You AEDC, said? Arkansas Economic. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm Christy Olson with Cartridge World. You made a comment a minute ago. It's competitively priced within the fleet market as the parent market. I have five kids. Right. I have two driving now. I have a third one that'll hit the road next year. So consider yourselves warned. Um, <laughs> 15 bucks a month for each one of those, that adds up pretty quick. You know, I, I look at, you know, I. With neither one of the first two drivers did we do, do the go to a big car lot thing and buy a car. We, we went down to the little corner guy, bought right. cash cars because of those five, four boys. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that $15 a month and at $500 a pop, I mean, I'll, as a mom, I'm going to automatically default to what at this point we've been, we've been using apps. Right. And apps that'll, they'll tell me if it's been turned off um, and my reward system is you get to keep the car so <laughs> um, and breathing that's always an incentive but so from the parent standpoint I mean I, I you know and, I, and I, I sold wireless 100 years ago and, and when these things started rolling out within Blackberry I, I sold some of those things on the big fleet level but from a parent standpoint the, the price point is my is my concern um, and I'd also notice there's, like, there's no social media about it. I just tried to send it to a couple car dealer friends of mine to see if they've heard about it and what their thoughts were. But I noticed like, I wasn't catching a Facebook page or anything like that. So okay. do you have any of that as well? And my other thing is, what, what is the price point future for the parent market? So you think that we're, we're probably a little high on, on the retail side there. Um, at one hope of ours there um, when I mean if they're if they're uh, buying this along with a vehicle um, we have figured that uh, roughly 20% of the car dealers business um, is a family coming in adding an additional vehicle to the car or to the to the family fleet um, because they have a new driver in the family um, most of those people are gonna finance and the beauty of, of working through those guys is you can finance this into the price of the car and it's fairly noticeable um, as far as increase in monthly payment. Um, but yeah, price, you know, we've had people say too, how can you put a, you know, a figure on your kid's safety? Um, so that's the other, the other hope there as well, but thank you. Uh, yes, Lolita Flagg, just by myself. Um, I had a question as to, uh, for the app, if it's uh, Siri or voice enabled and you're like getting um, directions. And so it's turned on, it looks like it's turned on, it looks like it's being used, but really it's not. You're not looking at it the whole time. If you set the, the thing up when the vehicle is, is stopped, um, Siri can talk to you or the, the navigation thing can talk to you the entire way. and 
it will not be reported back to the administrator's phone. Right. And it doesn't have to be from, from usage? No. Okay. No. If you use Bluetooth... Um, it, it says it doesn't monitor. Exactly. Exactly. So you can use the phone all day long uh, with the Bluetooth. And, if you have an older model that doesn't have Bluetooth capability, you're just using your phones. You know, it's going to be reported if you're doing it... Um, when the vehicle's traveling more than nine miles per hour. Okay. But if you put the address in while you're in a standstill and then you take off and it keeps talking, does it monitor it then? I think that's what you did there. Yes, once it's going beyond nine miles per hour, it will. Okay. Um, if you're if you're talking, not the not the, phone not the nav system, right? Okay. We. We have time for one more question. Uh, I think you were first here. I'm Neil with McLeod & Associates. Do you have a list of published dealers, car dealers, that uh, have access to this device? Uh, we do not have a list. Uh, actually, every, every new car dealer in the state of Arkansas actually technically can be our dealer. Uh, we probably have about 20 um, at this point. Um, and, you know, I can tell you some of those um, when we after after the meeting but uh yeah we're we're still working to to get into more of the car dealers certainly so all right we'll give it up for much. jerry matthews guys